Hey guys, I'm Matt. Welcome to Walkthrough Wednesdays. Today we are in our 148 foot greenhouse, which is actually our longest greenhouse here at the nursery. And we want to give you a walkthrough and show you some interesting stuff going on here at Mr. Maple. I'm Tim Nichols of MrMaple.com. We're a mail order business in West North Carolina, ships directly to your door. Today's walkthrough of our greenhouse, of our 148 foot house, is one I hope you're gonna really enjoy. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our weekly emails on MrMaple.com. We add at least 10 new trees every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. You wanna make sure you're signed up for that email. So I'm starting off all the way here at the back, but I wanna show you one of my favorites. Uh, I think it's a super underrated tree, and it's one we like to talk about a lot here at Mr. Maple, Acer Palmatum Green Strap. Now this is a plant, really, really beautiful, has a strap leaf, almost like a, like a, more of that elongated leaf like a Camagata. Right. And that's where it gets the name of green strap. It's not like that lunar lobum strap leaf, but it has that elongated leaf, almost like a Camagata, but it has mm -hmm. a more upright habit. Now this one gets to a very vase shape, but my favorite thing about this one is actually the fall color. It's about the color of my shirt sometimes with red and yellow in it. It is a neon orange with accents to it. Uh, really underrated for fall color. I would say one of my favorite oranges for, for the fall. Though. Now the springtime, you can get some bronzes out of it too. Definitely a cool plant. Pretty awesome. I've seen some larger specimens of this. It tends to be a good grower for us yeah, too. Yeah, very good, a vigorous nice, plant. A nice Not too big though, typically 10 to 12 foot and very full. It's a very thick, full tree. Most definitely. But we've got a lot of different sets. We're just gonna be walking by some Emperor Ones, some High Graph Crimson Queens, a lot of really uh, big sets we've got coming through here. Some Low Graft Orangeolas coming up on the right. And a lot of things that are in here, when we start getting to these, these sets, larger sets here, we've got tons of varieties. Right, I mean, there's right. probably two or 300 Why different varieties. Why don't you varieties. grab one of those Shana's there? I know we've talked about that one a lot, but there's some excellent sizes going on in Shana right now. Uh, introduction by Red Maple Nurseries. This is one uh, named after Billy Schwartz's daughter. We did an interview with Billy Schwartz on the phone, if you've heard that. Shana meaning Hebrew for beautiful, great compact dwarf. This one's been a little bit more shade. We're shooting this in early October. We're right before fall color. Probably do some more walkthroughs and peak fall color for you guys for sure. But this one's about to light up with some really bright red. Yeah, this is an excellent dwarf for containers, small spaces in the garden. Makes a nice rounded habit. It is a witch's broom, so it does have that short and center node. And it's a great plant that almost anybody can grow. It's a, a plant that's a great container plant. Uh, also good for fairy gardens, being that it, it yeah. doesn't grow very large. Gosh, there's a lot through here, guys. Uh, hmm. These Sangu Kakus are massive right now. There's some massive geisha going wilds here. I can't stop at everything, being that we're in the 148 foot house. We'll have a, we'll a two-hour video. How about these Sir Damons right now? Now, Sir Damon is an excellent winter interest tree. You want to give it some sunlight. These have been in more shade. But with sunlight, these can get to be a bright, bright pink red. It's a completely different bark color than your typical coral bark Sengukaku. Very exaggerated color. I mean, it's a very, very bright pink. Selection by our friend Crispy and Silva. And this plant just is amazing. It's mm -hmm. probably one of the most pink red barks of any of the coral One of the brighter plants. winter interest plants, for sure, for sure. I'm a big fan of this one and some great sizes and are one. Some of these probably ready to go to threes soon. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different types we're walking by. Peve, those Capersis. Peve Starfish, Capersi Dwarf. Now, we did a whole video on Capersi Dwarf. This is an excellent, excellent small uh, spreading tree that really is more flat mm -hmm. and spreading. I mean, it's probably the most flat and spreading of any of those Hime types. Right, think of this one kind of like Mirasaki Kiyohime or Kiyohime, it's in that family for sure. It's gonna have a little bit more of a soft red to strawberry colored border to it in the early spring. The, bo the border is a little bit more faint. This one's very popular for bonsai for that small leaf, but really small habit. Excellent for container gardening too, because it's gonna make that small little toadstool dome over top of your container. I love the Hime forms for container gardening. And uh, Capersi Dwarf, if you definitely, if you're into bonsai and you've already got Kiyohime or Seho, this is a great one to mix that color palette up with. Give you something a little bit different there. These have been grown in a nursery setting, so you see it's, they're pushed up a little bit at first, but this one has the most horizontal branching yeah, and, the shortest, flat. and the shortest of any of the those Hime types by far. Very nice plant for its small, small habit to it. Uh, Katsura here, uh, I'll pick one of these up. These are. Uh, you know, always a, a beacon of spring. Katsura is a fun one for that bright orange. I got the bright orange on today, but that bright orange to yellow spring color. 
This one is a showstopper in that early spring garden. Very vigorous plant for us too. Typically grows over a foot of growth a year as well. But Acer palmatum catsura. Yeah, love catsura. We've got a full video on that one as well. So go check out our catalog. If you're not familiar with the Mr. Maple Show, we have a lot of cultivar highlights. We had a great one in Capersi Dwarf. We've got a great one on catsura where you can see a specimen out in the landscape and we go talk about this plant specifically and you see it in all of its spring right. glory, right? How about Pung Kill? We got I some know, killer I know. That was the next kill. one I was, look, I was looking at because Pung Kill is a dark red lunar lobum style that is spectacular. Now we've got a whole video too on irregular summer growth. Uh, this plant is actually not a reversion. This is just summer growth during the summer. Mm -hmm. These larger leaves will mature out to what you see down low, but Pung Kill is a lunar lobum that is one of the darkest purple reds yeah. of any of those lunar lobum stuff. Lovely plant. This one is uh, really fun. Named for the curator at Chili Po Arboretum there in South Korea. It is a really fun plant. His name means a soft gentle wind, so we always thought it has to mean a soft gentle wind because it looks like such an elegant, graceful tree. But it's actually just the gentleman's name who is the curator there at that uh, arboretum. I'd actually put that in the description and Talon Buckholtz, who's signed up for our weekly emails as well, had sent me an email and said, Wow, that is very poetic, but it is the guy's name at Chili Bowl Arboretum. It does mean a soft, gentle wind in Korean as well. So. Yeah, it, 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 it does if you look that up. So we Very fitting. Oh, uh, let's, let's grab one of these. You want to grab one of those? Uh... Is that a good twist? Yeah. Can't talk about this one enough. This is a super funky plant uh, named by our friend Todd Lazane. Uh, Zydeco twist. He's Cajun too, so that's obviously where the name comes from. Zydeco twist. These are a Tupelo. And oh my gosh, give these a few weeks. They will be the color of my shirt. Tupelo's, this one goes to a neon orange. It is a, a fun plant. Uh, Zydeco Twist, fun name too. I mean, it kind of makes you want to hear that Cajun music when you see this one. I love plants with contorted habits. They give such a unique texture out in the landscape. Mm -hmm. And this one with its contorted branching, the branches just S hook back and forth. It gives the plant something funky and ornamental. Mm -hmm. And it's everything that people love about like a Harry Lauder walking stick tree but in a black gum. Oh yeah. And black gums give you some amazing fall color. Oh, this one, this one is neon orange typically for us. Love this plant. It's probably one of the plants that we've tried to keep on Mr. Maple as much as we can, but it's also the plant I think is heavily underused. I need to go so get beautiful. some Cajun food now. I'm, I'm kind of craving some jambalaya, maybe some Creole. That sounds pretty good. Okay, so we'll switch it up here a little bit. We've been talking about maples. I'll get another non-maple plant. We have Compressa here. This is Cornus sanguina Compressa, and this is a really, really nice curly leaf dogwood. It's one of the, the forms that has some of the most, I would almost compare it to like a Shishigashira form. Yeah, I, I fell in love with this plant when we saw it in Charlottesville, Virginia. Mm -hmm. We were walking around uh, a lady's garden, private gardens there, and I saw this thing out in the landscape, a six, seven footer, and it is a Shishigashira-like mm -hmm. selection of a Cornus sanguina. So you've got everything you love about the uh, the dwarf uh, dogwoods, and you've got it with those leaves that are super ornamental. Gives a unique texture out in the landscape. They can make nice pillars, mm -hmm. which really make good statements out in the landscape. It's a it's sometimes referred to as a blood twig dogwood. I have had some excellent fall color on this. I've actually got a picture on our website where it's in that bright, bright red fall color. Uh, I've seen these be just exquisite, very, very uh, ornamental there in the garden. And uh, yeah, one we typically offer, that, that uh, Cornus sanguina compressa. So. Easy plant to grow and a great companion plant with Japanese maples. Plants that we love, we try to do our best to carry, and this is definitely a plant that we, we like a bunch. Let's I mean, do these, I mean, you gotta hit these up. Yeah, Kamigata, selection by J.D. Veritrees. An amazing little dwarf, super hardy, super heat tolerant. And this is a plant that gives you a really nice bronzing color in the summer mm -hmm. if you grow it in full sun. Uh, excellent for bonsai. Tough as nails. I mean, J.D. Veritrees in the book actually recommends this one for rock gardens. So, uh, you know, a Japanese maple in a rock garden, you know it's gonna have a lot of reflective heat. It is a very durable plant. It's one I've personally planted up against a brick wall in a southeastern exposure. Uh, we're in zone 6B, but it does get a good bit of residual heat there as well. And uh, I've found it to be exceptionally durable. We probably need to do a heat seeker series, or heat, not heat seeker, heat tolerant Japanese maples part four and talk about Kamigata, because it is one that's tough. Yeah, it's tough as nails, and it's a great container plant. And the fact, the way that the leaves hang down off this plant as you right. get a mature plant, 
it's something that people everybody falls in love with. Well. It's a really fun plane. It's definitely one that people grab in person pretty quick. Man, there's so much in here. I could walk by and grab everything. I'm trying to find ones we hadn't talked about quite as much for you guys. Uh, now, I talked about this one a lot, but I have to get it back on camera. Acer Palmatum Kiyohime. Always a hit for us. Uh, this is going to be a great companion to that, that Capersi Dwarf as well. Really dark purple borders, so one of the brightest purple borders in the early spring. But again, a small, compact form. Yeah, this is a plant that I like because it's so you it's it gives such a, a nice spring interest. I know when we have these in the spring, people go crazy for them. Mm -hmm. When we were at garden shows, it's probably one of our quickest oh, wow. sales is the Kiyohime. And it's because that purple red border around every single leaf is mm -hmm. so ornamental. It grabs everybody's attention. Everybody wants to grow it in a container immediately. They fill out quickly at first, so it's a great size to get in a one. Uh, they're hard to ship in a three. We might offer them in threes again, but they get wide. So it's a small, wide plant. Uh, so even in our threes, it's not uncommon for them to be, you know, two feet wide. And so it's a little round ball and uh, awesome plant to be growing. Acer Palmatum Kiyohime. Uh, you're probably familiar with this one if, you're, if you've watched our show much, but a classic Japanese maple. Now, this has been our 148 foot house. We've got a lot of other plants in here. We could talk to you for hours in this house alone. But we know that you've got to get... But you'll have to tune in for another walkthrough Wednesday for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we appreciate you all watching today's show. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, to, uh, share our gardening content with your gardening friends. We know that if you like it, they'll probably like it too. So we'd really pre appreciate it if you shared the videos. Hey guys, we've been doing all this regularly scheduled content. We hope you're enjoying these podcasts. We've got some really fun stuff coming up very soon with the Maple Society. We're going to be doing some tours of different gardens. We're also going to be walking through some amazing conifer and ginkgo gardens. So stay tuned for that content. We're going to be mixing some of that into our walkthrough Wednesdays where we're walking through perfect fall color gardens here at Mr. Maple and some other gardens we're getting out to. But we're going to keep giving you these greenhouse walkthroughs on Walkthrough Wednesday because we love to get out and talk about plants. And it gives us kind of a spontaneous format to show you kind of what we're growing here at Mr. Maple. So we hope you're enjoying that. Thank you all for watching. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.